Okay, welcome back fans and friends. For this episode, we have another estate wagon. And the reason for that is because they, they were all on the shelf. And I already said in the last video, we picked up, I picked up half of them. I picked up this one. They didn't have this one. I didn't want that one. That one's a police vehicle. I didn't want it. And this one is uh, probably the second most unique that I saw there. Uh, you'll see this one in a second. And then we have the 1972 Vista Cruiser. The next video so i will just go over this one right here which is the pontiac grand le mans safari 1976 and just quickly you guys all know all this already the chrysler holly gm ford uh 14 plus 164 this is package contains one vehicle and the back is exactly identical to the, pre the previous one this is series 7. i don't remember seeing very many of the other series but uh anyway and there we have the front of the vehicle it looks pretty much evenly done now what I'll say about this vehicle uh, just before we get into that the limited edition the die-cast metal chassis the die-cast vehicle again they're reminding you it's in there 14 plus 164 and again limited edition and for these they usually they have that sticker there in the middle you can see there that little white sticker instead of printing it with white ink like they do there and then the trailer hitch. So from what I saw, I think every vehicle in this series has a trailer hitch. So I've said it before with the first black band that I did without knowing this, that all the wagons will come with it. If you buy the uh, hitched home series, these ones are perfectly compatible with them. If you don't want a pickup truck. Because I did see actually the all-terrain Nissan, but I did not get it. Anyway, I think this one here, you can see the little gap there. The back will open up. I do like the hubcaps too. That's entirely unique, at least to this vehicle. And without further delay, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. All right, so I will just bring in these two. Uh, you guys have already seen them, hopefully, so I'm not gonna go over it again. Uh, hopefully, I will take a look and see a little bit more factually based rather than sputtering utter nonsense. So without delay, I will just take this out. Right, so there you go, 1976 Grand Le Mans Safari from Pontiac. And I do like that little triangle on the hood there. It's too bad the hood does not open. It would be much better, but I guess you can't get everything all at once. So we're starting from the front. Nice and rectangular from the mid to late 70s and early 80s. Steering wheel is clearly visible because of the white interior. Uh, very good weather stripping down there. You can see all the... Uh, Roof rack is also very well done. Uh, the lights are just painted. They're not in prints, but it is molded in. You can see the Pontiac right there, the little inverted red triangle. Maybe my fingers are making it worse. The one thing that I'll say is that there's nothing on the license plates. Uh, so sometimes with the Black Bandit, you'll get that little BB. Uh, it was evident in the Ford Bronco as well, but not other cars, so it's not universal. Uh, we have a defect there, uh, manufacturing, it's been improperly stamped, that kind of ruins it. For once they did the wheels okay, but the rims themselves are damaged. And you can see the imprints for the doors, the, mirror, the windows are all in there, they don't seem to want to fall in. We go to the back, you can see the lights, the trailer hitch, the plane license plate again. Pontiac, you can clearly read there, not hard at all, where the handle is. And this little spoiler type thing here, you can use to pop open the hood. Very easy, but does not stay up. So you just have to deal with that. And you can see very good interior detail. It doesn't appear to have a lot of cargo room, I guess, because the gas tanks and other stuff in the back there. Like, we'll pull up the other two just to compare, but, I mean, it doesn't look like there's as much room. Obviously, the four seats and the driver's side, they're right there. It's very nice having it like this. It's very clear and easy to see. So I'll give it that. No other stamping defects on the wheels, which is good. And we do have the bumper here, which is a separate piece, which is nice. Go to the bottom of it. Once again, they've gone with this matte black finish, which I do like. Like, I'm not going to complain at all. Uh, I brought it up in the last video. This looks way worse than this. So I'm just saying, if you probably wanted to do Black Bandit, 
like an actual entirely black bandit, you could have done it, probably the entire car. But anyway, that's just a no rear view mirrors. I guess I'm bringing that up just now, but uh, I'm just saying no rear view mirrors. But it doesn't seem to take away anything else. This underneath underside the is very much simpler than the satellite. So I'm just saying that, and you can see here the uh, doesn't want to stay, but it's a larger piece, so maybe that's why. And you can clearly see its mechanism underneath there. That's how clear the windows are. Right? It's very nice. So there we have it, 1976 Grand Le Mans Safari. Use under license. Uh, green light 2019. So obviously this is, but the China is a little bit faded out there. But I mean, overall, you can easily read it. Easily make it out. The trailer hitches in the center. You can see a bit of a gap on either side of the rear bumper, but it doesn't take it away. It doesn't move at all, unless I want to break it off. It will not move. Same thing on the front. You see a bit of a gap there. Uh, and in fact, you can almost see through it. Yeah. But, it, I mean, if you're looking at forward, front end, it doesn't impact. So, we I will cover the drive test. Way better than the uh, satellite, doesn't? Yeah, look at that. For some reason, they. I don't know. I don't know what to say. So, Pontiac Grand Le Mans Safari. I hope I got that right. It is kind of a lot. Plus, it's a vehicle I'm not entirely familiar with. Uh, just want to cover. I think they did very well for this, except for that. Obviously, kind of takes it away. The painting on the middle, that red, is just splotched on, and it doesn't look fantastic. But from a distance and for display, it doesn't take it away. Plus, if it stays in the package, with the reflection of the package, you don't really see it as clearly as you should. Uh, the nice rectangular lines, this imprinted very well. Uh, you can clearly see interior details, which is always nice. Uh, steering wheel ceiling is mostly round. I'm not going to complain, because once again, you cannot get in there. But what I was saying... Before I carry on, we will just take a look at the interior. I see, and you see, because it's black, it's very hard to make out. But you can fit; I can fit my whole finger in there. And with this, because of the reduced interior space, does not go in. Anyway, I think that they did this really well. So good for them. Like I said, the license plate being blank is not huge because most of their vehicles have that as well. Uh, no rear view mirrors, so that kind of sucks. But I mean, overall, the rest of the vehicle seems to be done okay. Like I said, just mainly this. A uh, couple of minor gaps. Cat has joined us. I guess he wasn't a wagon fan until he got bored. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Tom is from Toronto. This is the vehicle from this video. And it's part of the series I'm doing for this weekend because they happen to have most, if not all, of Series 7 for the estate wagons. And thank you guys for watching and to the next one.